What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the SPY, the NASDAQ, the QQQs and the futures, break down what the charts are telling us and why I believe it's very likely that the market might see a big trap very soon. Now before I break anything down, before I get into any more details about the trap, I have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner, make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last things, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, whether it's $1 or $100, it's up to you. You're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $3,000. And the best part is any could be a free Tesla share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends tomorrow. So check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So guys, the market is down kind of hard today and maybe not extremely hard, but still relatively hard compared uh, to the you know run up we had. SPY is down over 1%. QQQ is down 2% and the market did end up coming down a bit now in my previous video i predicted that the market would come down by tuesday it ended up actually coming down a little bit earlier so just one day earlier completely fine though now i want to break down something else i believe is going to happen and what formation i believe is likely going to dictate spy but before i talk about that i got to talk about some context just to let you guys know tomorrow we have excuse me, ExxonMobil and AMD. We have UPS and a bunch of other stocks out there, a bunch of companies announcing their earnings. Then for Wednesday, we have Meta, T-Mobile, Peloton, pretty big, but the big day is going to be Thursday, which is when we have, you know, Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, Ford, you know, Hershey, not to mention Sony, a bunch of big companies have earnings. Thursday is going to be big. And then for Wednesday, the day before the huge earnings day, we also have FOMC. The Fed is going to be talking. Uh, if they give us a 50 basis point rate hike, as soon as that comes out, the market is going to crash. Uh, to be blunt with you guys, yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. But if they don't give us 50 basis points and they give us 25 basis points, I believe that that's possible but the market could still come down because it's going to depend on what the fed says and i believe the fed is going to give the markets a reality check okay it's going to be on wednesday i will go into more details about it tomorrow because you have to remember the inflationary report for the month of january is going to be coming out in two weeks okay and when the data comes out right now many fed officials many fed uh, 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 constituents are saying it's likely going to be kind of hot, right? Egg prices are going up, lumber's going up, copper's going up. It's likely going to be a hot report. Why is this important? Because the the media, the Fed, they're pricing it and acting like, oh, inflation, it's gone. It's, it's coming down. The Fed is going to pivot soon. The Fed is going to pause. No, they're not. Because now we're, we're seeing signs that inflation is still high. Inflation is not gone. The Fed is incentivized to be hawkish. The Fed is incentivized to rug pull the markets. And I believe that's what they're going to do. Whether we get 50 basis points or 25, I, I don't really know until it comes out. Either are possible, but I do believe that 25 is a lot more likely. What do I think is going to happen? I believe there are two main possibilities. I know this line's a little hard to see. I'm going to try to adjust this a tiny bit. I don't think I can. Anyways, I'm seeing a potential head and shoulders forming on SPY. I don't know if it's going to be flat. If it's flat, then we might have a continuation of the sell-off tomorrow, followed by a bit of a bounce and maybe a push-up on Wednesday. Maybe Tuesday slash Wednesday we get a rebound. I believe that's likely going to happen. And I don't know what's going to trigger it. Maybe Powell's about to speak. Maybe it's the 25 basis point hike decision that causes this last rebound, which is going to be a fake out. It's going to trick so many people into buying calls, thinking the market's going to rally. And then we end up getting rug pulled afterwards because of Powell. I also believe that the Fed is going to raise the terminal rate. Uh, not that they're going to raise it, but maybe the ultimate rate they might. And also they're going to do it 
in a, in a way that's even higher than what the market is expecting. The market thinks the Fed is going to stop at either 4.75 or 5%. That's what the market is saying. But the Fed has told us they're going to raise it above 5%, above 5%. It's going to be a reality check in my opinion. So here's what I'm seeing. I think the market's going to come down, continue to come down a little bit tomorrow. See this blue line that's kind of cutting this off? This is actually the major resistance that SPY had for almost all of 2022. So this resistance line, if we do test it, it's now going to become support. I don't know if we're going to have like a break below it and then a bit of a bounce after or if we're going to bounce off of it. Either one of them are very possible. I'm, I'm thinking we're going to bounce off of it. If we break below 400, of course, which I think we will, the NASDAQ has a gap. It's very close to filling and might go for the gap till tomorrow. SPY might come down too. We could bounce around the high 390s. Then we bounce. Maybe we hold up and we close tomorrow in the high 390s to 400, maybe. I, I don't know if we're going to get the rebound immediately. And maybe going into the FOMC day, the market starts to push up a bit. Maybe the, the hike is announced at 25 and that triggers the, the big push up. Maybe not. Maybe this push up is the last one. See the yellow one right here. And then we just come crashing down. Honestly, guys, it, it doesn't matter. I just want to warn everyone of a possible trap because if we do get this push up, we could fill this gap one last time which happens to align with the slanted head and shoulders. I know it's a little hard to see with the, with the slanted neckline. It would look kind of like this, the neckline, like this. But anyways, right, forming the blue head and shoulders right there. I'm not sure if everyone got that, but it's okay. It doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter in my opinion because what's the ultimate move? We could li literally ignore most of this. And just know the ultimate move is us most likely coming back down. Most likely coming back down to the 390s, 380s, maybe even lower as weeks go on, depending on other factors. That's what I think is likely going to happen to SPY. We could be forming a head and shoulders. Okay? And if that's the case, the market may take a hit too. NEO is likely going to respect a trend like this, where NEO gets one last push up. Maybe it forms its own kind of like head and shoulders. Or it just continues to come down. Either way, I do see Neo coming down to fill these gaps. Uh, for AMC, same thing. AMC has this gap up here. We, we're either going to come up to fill this gap and then just, you know, collapse and start coming down pretty hard. And I do believe AMC will squeeze, by the way. I'm bullish on AMC super long term. I think it has squeeze potential. I'm liking the fundamental improvements it's been making. But I have to note, we're not squeezing tomorrow. We're not squeezing yet. We're likely going to come down with the market. We even broke below $5. I did talk about this a long time ago, a couple of weeks ago, or like last week, I think I mentioned this. We did break below 5 today. So could we could try to come back to either gap resistance or this gap fill area by tomorrow or maybe part of Wednesday. And then we get a big, big reversal right back down. Then AMC starts filling these gaps down here and the fours, taking it all the way back down to the threes. As we get into like February, going into March, I believe that's going to happen. And FOMC and maybe Apple earnings will play a big role in triggering it. Finally, for Tesla, same thing. I think I have it drawn out. I'm seeing a move like this. Tesla might come down, fill its gap down here in the 160 area, maybe bounce around there, maybe get a rebound. If it fails, then we do have some other area. We have some gap support at 155. Uh, I think Tesla's going to try to bounce first before it ends up coming down to maybe fill this gap down here. That's what I'm presuming, and that's what I believe is going to happen. And we do have like a slanted head and shoulders like formation forming. So there could be a fake out rally on Tesla, once again, to trick lots of people. Um, for Ape, this thing is up, but big gap down here, major resistance. It's very close to resistance. It's just pumping off the news about the potential conversion. Not confirmed. I don't want to say too much about it just yet. I do think Ape is going to come right back down to start filling these gaps. And that's a giant gap, I think, down here as well. Be very careful with Ape. I also want to note that Bed Bath & Beyond is up 12%. We do have a potential. Is this looking like a head and shoulders? No, never mind. We do have a lot of gaps down here. That's the bottom line. I think we have lots of unfilled gaps. 
it might try to push up here and there, but overall, I think it's just if the whole market starts coming down, we see lots of capitulation, this is likely going to come down too. NASDAQ, well, what do you know? It actually came down almost exactly like I predicted, down almost 2%. I'm seeing two possibilities. We either continue coming down, we finish filling this gap first, then we get a rebound. Maybe we fill this gap and then we continue to fall. Or we could be forming a giant head and shoulders where we come down even harder. We push up, forming the right shoulder, because this could be the left shoulder, this could be the head and right shoulder. And then we continue seeing NASDAQ get destroyed. Maybe because of Apple earnings, Amazon earnings, and the big tech earnings. Don't forget these big, big, big companies. They could be the thing that triggers a big sell-off. The VIX, two possibilities. It either continues to push up, bringing... And that's going to be correlated with the market coming down. I'm, I'm not going to try to say that the, I'm not going to make it seem like the VIX is the thing that's going to cause it. It's not the thing that causes it. It's just reacting to the SPY in a way. It's either going to keep pushing up or it's going to come down to fill this gap and then respect an uptrend. Either way, I do see this thing pushing up. If it comes down to fill this gap, this could be the fake out rally before a big reversal. That could be it, the fake rally, which could be coming either tomorrow or maybe Wednesday morning. All right. And then on Apple, same thing, exact same thing. This thing was selling off a little harder. Uh, we could, Apple's a little different. It could be coming down to this 140 area. Maybe go for this gap fill around this in the 140s first. Then it tries to form like a head and shoulders. Then it continues to sell off. Or it could try to push and fill this gap. It could come down, bounce off after filling this gap down here. It gets one last rally to fill this gap into FOMC. And then it just, you know, it comes down and we see more capitulation. Similar to SPY, right? I'm just noting that. Triple Q, same thing. I'm anticipating it to come down, fill its gap down below very soon, maybe get a bounce. I don't know if it's going to fill its gap up here. Maybe it goes to gap resistance or it even tries to fill it. Maybe because of a 25 basis point rate hike that's announced. Maybe, maybe that happens. And even if that happens, Powell will probably eat all of this up and cause a big drop anyways. Now, if we get the 50 basis point hike, there's no guarantee we fill this gap. We might just see the market collapse from there. That's why it's very, very, uh, you have to be very careful, right? The dollar on the weekly, it's starting to get a breakout from its falling wedge. It's not really a strong breakout. It's still at 102. It was in the 101s very recently chopping around there. So hopefully it continues. But as of right now, we're starting to show some life in it. And I do believe FOMC could trigger this thing to start pushing up a little more, which could be bearish for the markets. 10-year Treasury yield is once again forming the double bottom, and it is still respecting it. I did call this out a couple of days ago. We're respecting an uptrend. It's going to likely continue. And if it continues, it's going to be bearish for the market as it starts to fill all these gaps here. Right, Bearish sign for the stock market. Anyways, that's what I have for this video. I want to thank each and every one of you for listening. Uh, I do believe there might be a fake out rally in the markets, a, a rally to the upside, a fake one. It's not that huge. And even if that happens, do not be fooled by it. Be very careful because I can't promise anything, but I will tell you one thing. It's very likely the market will come down, very, very likely. And I believe if we get the fake out rally, it will trick people and will ultimately come down afterwards. It's going to just be a trap. I wanted to call it out. I want to prepare you at least a day in advance for it. And I want the best for everyone. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate everyone out there. Remain calm, cool, and collected, and I'll see you guys in the next one. The market to the moon, because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.